You're watching Tim's Wild Kitchen, where I wander about Scotland, trying to catch things, hunt them, forage for them, and then take them back to my kitchen and cook them. Hope you enjoy it. plan is that hopefully we'll get out on the lake, the loch, and have a paddle about and uh, see if we can spot any rising fish. If we can spot some rising fish, then we'll fish a dry fly or an emerger. And it's quite calm over there because it's in the lee of the wind. So if there are any rising fish, it's likely to be over there. And if not, well, we'll have to pull some wet flies through the water and in some likely looking spots and see how we get on. Um, they're all wild brownies, so there's no stockfish in this loch, it's never been stocked. Uh, it's a beautiful loch in a bow here. Wind has just picked up on me a little bit this afternoon, which perhaps is slightly against me, but hey, it's no, nothing like getting the excuses in early, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just tie this fly up, we'll launch our vessel for the day and set sail, see how we get on. Because there's no fish rising uh, that we can see and I've never fished this loch before so I've got no idea where the fish are likely to be holding beyond the usual sort of they might be over there because there's a feature kind of thoughts. Um, I'm gonna stick a nymph on uh, and see how we go and that'll fish under the water and will require a bit of pulling along. I've got various different ones here we've got some favorite nymphs my mate John Penny tied these flies for me and over here I've got a version of a salmon fly that he tied for Prince Charles using the Great Bustard feather from the Great Bustard reintroduction project on um, Salisbury Plain. So he's tied a couple of trout versions of those for me. So we might have a go with those later. They've got royal approval, so they're bound to be good. Um, but for the time being, I think I've got a little hair's ear there, but I've got a little pheasant tail nymph here. which has got a big gold bean on the front of it. So I think that's going to be quite a nice natural looking. Uh, nymph for this bit of water, so we'll give that a go. And if we really start struggling, we'll put a dropper on up here and fish with two nymphs so we can cover more water. It's our first catch. Right, let's row that way. Okay. We have found a few small occasionally rising fish. It's probably the, uh, the Fly Fishing Society now letting me know that I'm wrong. <laughs> There are a lot of ways of putting this. There are a lot of caveats, excuses, reasons, get out clauses, trite little phrases that I could come out with right now. And I might list a few in a minute as to why I failed in my mission to catch a Scottish wild brown trout in the beautiful, beautiful Loch Nabo, um, just around the corner in Lambride, uh, in Murrayshire, where we are. And Murray's beautiful. And the fishing there looks like it's going to be great. But no matter what I tried, <laughs> I could not get uh, a wild brownie on the line. Um, and that happens. Here we go. Here's the excuses. You know, wild fish. It's not a stocked place. Um, you know, it's called fishing, not catching. Everybody blanks. You know, it wouldn't be any fun if you caught fish all the time. Could have used a bait, didn't. Could have used a spinner, didn't. All of that stuff. Bottom line, there were a few fish moving. I haven't fished a lot before. Those are the last two excuses. I've failed 
to catch a fish. Um, I feel bad about that, but, but I have a, a little backup plan. Here, I've got a nice piece of dry cured steelhead trout. And this is interesting. It's farmed on the west coast of Scotland in sea cages, a bit like salmon, but unlike salmon, it's a much lower stocking density. It's much more disease resistant fish and much, much lower in fat and the food conversion ratio is better. I'm still not entirely convinced by it. I'm having a look at it, which is why I've got some. It's been sent to me to have a look at, but luckily we've got some nice fish here. It eats really well. It's very tasty. So I've cured it. I'm going to smoke that and we're going to make with this what we would have made with the wild brownie. So my nice piece of steelhead trout here has been cured in my magic dry cure. My magic dry cure is handmade, the same as my wool power shirts. And it's been put together like an artisan as well. And in here, we've got sugar, salt, and a few spices, equal quantities of sugar and salt. I've liberally seasoned this piece of steelhead trout with this and then after about 12 hours in the fridge, I've taken it out. I've rinsed it off, I've patted it dry, I've put it back in the fridge, so it's gone a bit sticky, nice and dry and a bit sticky. That's now ready to have two hours in purely whiskey barrel smoke in the old cold smoking setup with the digital Bradley smoker. Let's go. Look at the state of the bloody boot room. Anyway, in here. I've actually got the Bradley rolling set up for two hours just with the whiskey oak. In it goes. Probably a bit elaborate to put the whole thing on just for one little piece, but you know, I'm not doing a big batch, am I? I'm just doing a little one. So I've got my nicely cold smoked piece of Still head there, pop that down there. Just gonna have a little slice just to check it's good. Oh yeah, nice, really nice. And if that was a smaller brown trout or even a smaller rainbow trout, I would definitely cure it for less time and smoke it for less time, right? Because it's thinner, take less time to do. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of quick, super quick dishes here. Um, one's a little bit more involved than the other. Um, the first one, I'm literally gonna, you know, celebrate this in all its glory. I take a few little chunks of this. squeeze a lemon, black pepper, couple of leaves of thyme. That is going to be more than good enough for a first little taster. So just some plain smoked trout like that, but this is a bit more sort of old school. I've got some butter here and I've softened it down so it's just a little bit cooler than, uh, a bit warmer, sorry, than room temperature. I'm just going to break it up with a whisk and really get it going so it starts to whip up a little bit. Yeah? It gets stuck inside the whisk a little bit. It's probably a sign that it's not quite warm enough, but we'll persevere. Keep it going. And once it's Starting to soften up nicely like that, we can switch from the whisk to a little paddle and just give it a little beat. Oh, it looks good. And then once you've softened the butter, we can start seasoning it. I'm going to season it with a few unusual things that you've probably got kicking around. Uh, a little teaspoonful of ketchup. <coughs> Getting that in there. A little dessert spoonful of mayo going in there too. So it's going to start to really lighten up the butter. 
And that sounds a bit weird, right? We're putting mayonnaise in butter and all these things. This is just a little structural tinkering, seasoning everything up. A little bit of black pepper. Pinch of mace, very old fashioned spice mace. It's the outer husk of the nutmeg, uh, but it's really nice, but it's quite potent, so be a bit careful with it. It's a very traditional thing um, to put in stuff when you're potting it. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of doing a riff on potted trout, which I'd probably actually hot smoke and then finish with lots of butter. This, I've got the cold smoked trout, but I'm going for uber indulgence with the butter. And once I've made the butter, I'm gonna dice up the trout with a little bit of um, pickled gherkin, some hedgerow garlic, this is Jack by the Hedge uh, garlic mustard as it's sometimes called, a little bit of parsley, and then we're gonna serve that with some old school Melba toast uh, <clears throat> and some cress. Uh, but first, we've got to get this butter sorted. I'm going to put a little drizzle of olive oil in there. <clears throat> Just to really max it out. And I'm going to give it a little taste. A little bit will go a long way. A little sprig of parsley and some of my garlic mustard. I've washed it. I'm just going to pick a few of the bigger leaves and take the stems off because they're quite tough. And we'll use some of the tiny little tips as a garnish later as well. I suppose instead of parsley, I could use ground elder um, and similar sort of flavour. And that would be a wild ingredient too. I haven't got quite round to that yet. A little bit of gherkin. Feel free to use your own pickled cucumber if you've got it. So I'm incorporating some tartar sort of flavours in with my um, potted buttery flavours. So we're sort of colliding those two dishes together really, a sort of smoked trout tartar with a bit of potted trout undertone. Now I'm gonna skin my remaining piece of trout fillet. And I won't throw that skin away, I'll save it for later. And if I put that between two nice bits of um, non-stick baking parchment, a little drizzle of oil and roast that in the oven with another tray on the top, it'll go crispy like a little cracker um, and you could sort of crumble that over a little salad or something. I'm not going to dice this up too small, okay? I'm going to leave it slightly chunky so it can really sing through the dish. Quite rough hewn. So we've got this buttery dressing, which is quite smart, and then we've got this fairly rough hewn kind of trout. And now all I'm going to do is combine the two together, but I'm not going to do that in one hit. I'm going to take a little bit of the season butter out so that we make sure we don't end up with too high a ratio of butter to fish, okay? Little squeeze of lemon in there. Gently, gently, and stir around. And because the trout's nice and cold and the butter content in this is quite high, it will try and sort of start to set a little bit like a, like a potted trout would as well. So we're gonna take advantage of that. And I'm gonna do some very fancy 1970s style plating up. So I'm gonna pop this turn that off, okay. Um, the temptation would be to pop that in the fridge. If you were making them for a dinner party, you could layer those on a little cling film lined tray or something and have them ready in the fridge. Um, I actually don't really want to fridge that. And if you do fridge it, bring it out for half an hour before you serve it because we want that butter to be a little bit soft and ready uh, to sort of eat and spread on a bit of crunchy taste. You don't have to use this, but it's generally accepted that cheap white bread is the perfect way to go. I'm gonna toast that in the toaster quickly. Plastic white bread, fresh from the toaster. Now, <clears throat> all I do now is, it's a little bit, a little bit wasteful, but these are the, this is the old school method. Um, I'm just gonna trim it up to 
make little squares. Don't worry, we can use the crust to make breadcrumbs or feed them to the chickens or, you know, whatever. And then you've got two toasted bits and in the middle it's all bready. So you hold your hand flat and you get the knife and you go like this. And you'll, you'll find that you can slice through it like that. So you get these nice little bits of melba. And then all we're gonna do, if you had a grill going or a hot oven, you could just finish tasting them in there. I'm just gonna pop them in a little hot pan rather than putting on a grill. A couple of little garnishes. We'll put a bit of extra pickled cucumber on there. We've gotta have some cress, because if we're going back in time to the point where Melba taste is accessible and acceptable, then we, and a, you know, something potted in butter and done in a ring, then we've definitely gotta be allowed a bit of mustard cress. I'll then rewild it a bit, if you'll excuse the expression, with a few little bits of my Jack by the Hedge garlic mustard there, just so that it's not too, you know, 1970s dinner party. Although, I quite like that, a bit like that. I mean, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to scoop that out and serve it inside half an avocado, but, you know, there's a line. <coughs> a little bit of Melba taste, to spread it on and crunch up, that's super crunchy. See? And then <coughs> just a little piece of lemon in case you find it wants a bit more. So there you've got it. Little modern version of potted cold smoked steel head with some forage herbs, a bit of pickle, and some Melba toast. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so here, or it might be over there, or somewhere else.